Uh, we have two readings, and then uh, the Reverend Colleen Earp will share the gospel. Our first is from Psalm 67. It is Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. And from Revelation chapter 21, verse 10, and then chapters 21, 22, through chapter 22, verse 5. And in the spirit, he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in this city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. And either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Here ends the first two readings. It was a little chaotic getting here this morning. Every printer in the world seemed to be conspiring against me. So I came in a bit of a whirlwind, and Pastor Laura bailed me out, uh, and I'm still playing catch up a little. So I thank you for your welcome, and for your grace, and for your good listening to the word. The readings continue with the gospel according to John chapter 14. Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. The word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, 
and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sometimes I need to remember to slow down and breathe as well. Take a deep breath with me, will you? And remember the breath of the Spirit within us and among us. Friends, it is a joy to worship with you this morning. Today actually marks, this is, I have now visited more than 50% of the churches in the Presbytery of the James. So thanks for getting me. That's, a, that's exciting. <laughs> And what a beautiful place to be that moment. I, I have been in this presbytery now for eight years. I was serving at Camp Hanover and on the presbytery staff, so I have known your good name for a long time. Uh, and I've now been at Massanetta Springs for eight months, almost exactly. I still wake up every morning in absolute awe that I get to serve in such a storied place with such a historic ministry. And as Pastor Laura said, this year we celebrate 100 years, our centennial of Presbyterian ministry in that place. There's a lot of exciting things going on as we celebrate that birthday. We have our summer conferences happening, most notably our Bible conference, which is what we're actually celebrating 100 years of. We have a phenomenal lineup of preachers. There will be birthday cake and lots of other good things. We're also just finishing a season of assisting with refugee resettlement. For about six years, Massanetta Springs has had a partnership with Church World Service in our area and helped move families to the Shenandoah Valley and keep them together in large groups. We have enough housing that we can do that in ways that a lot of other individuals and organizations cannot. And with the withdrawal from Afghanistan late last summer, Church World Service contacted us and said, we might have a few extra people. Uh, and our executive director said, okay, we're, we're here, we'll do this, we'll do this together. And then we turned to our friends and neighbors and said, help. <laughs> and you all did. And we had hundreds of volunteers and we were able to help uh, more than 185 people from Afghanistan resettle in Western Virginia over the last eight months. So I arrived in September, in October, we started welcoming people including two babies who were born in the area. It was a very chaotic time, but a very exciting one, uh, and an incredible opportunity to live into Christ's call to love our neighbors and not worry about who those neighbors are, just to love them and welcome them. So Church World Service handled all of the programming, the language learning, the job placement, the schooling, and all we did was hospitality beds and meals, uh, and for, for the last seven months or so, we've been able to do that. So thank you for your support and help. Thank you for being part of the partnership of ministry that we are doing there. Uh, it is really wonderful to meet you and to be with you this morning and to celebrate that. It is something else to step into a 100-year-old ministry, though. There are people who have loved Massanetta so long before I got there. I didn't grow up attending conferences there. I did not grow up in Virginia at all, but I've been here now for about a third of my life, and I've heard the stories. I've heard so many stories about leadership, about transformation, stories of connection and community, stories of rest and renewal. One of the first things I knew about Massanetta Springs was a program we call the Advocates, the Youth Advocates, who serve our middle school conferences. These are high school students serving as the leaders, and we call them the Advocates after this exact verse, after the Holy Spirit. They lead recreation and worship. They facilitate small groups. They are the role models for our middle school students, sharing their faith, and support to these younger people. It's an incredible model for leadership and growth, one that I am really excited to work with this summer. 
And while the advocates are very specific to our middle school conferences, it strikes me that the spirit of that program flows through everything we're doing at Massanetta Springs, lifting up new leaders to love and support one another. It feels like a really important time to be part of that ministry. It is exhausting out there in the world, isn't it? War and conflict rage on everywhere, it seems, in Ukraine, in Syria, in Yemen, in Israel, Palestine, and so many other places. We have senseless violence happening in our communities, in grocery stores, in churches. People are going hungry, including our very littlest ones, this shortage of baby formula, all because of corporate greed. There are so many ways we are hurting in our world. Having safe places for renewal and connection reminds me that the story doesn't end with hatred and violence and suffering. The story does end at some point. We often think of the end times as, well, the exact kind of awfulness we're witnessing in our world today. But God's ending for us is a story of welcome and abundance, very different from those ideas. God's ending for us is a story of restoration. These verses from Revelation are a good reminder that God has plans for the redemption and restoration of all creation. We don't read a lot from Revelation in the Presbyterian Church or following the Revised Common Lectionary. This is one of the few times it pops up. And I love that these verses are so clear about the beautiful vision for the end in Revelation. It's not about a pop culture version of the story where believers are taken up away from this place when Christ comes again. No, this is a story of God who loves us and comes down to be with us. It's a story about restoration and healing. It's a story about hope that even with as much mayhem as we have brought upon ourselves, God has not given up on us. God has a plan to redeem us. In this story in Revelation, there is a crystal clear river flowing from God's throne. That water, that life force is coming directly from the throne of authority from all creation, not from something people have built, like in the earlier prophecies. People aren't in charge of it at all. We can't be selfish or ruinous with this resource. God's story ends with trees abundant with fruit for eating and leaves for healing. That healing is coming from creation itself. God is coming down to creation, not taking us away from it. In the end, Eating from a tree is no longer a sign of our fall and our sin as it was in the beginning. It is a sign that our relationship with God is restored. And when we worship, we get to see God's face, which our ancestors never got to do. We are marked as God's own. This is a new relationship with our creator. God will be our light, our lamp, our sun, reigning forever. God's presence brings peace to the chaos of the cities we've built. We don't need to get away from this place. We are part of it. We are within God's renewed creation. This is good news. In a world that feels chaotic and full of worry, there is a hopeful endgame of redemption and restoration. This doesn't all end with the ways that we have seriously damaged the earth. This doesn't end with pandemic or political turmoil or violence or selfishness. No, God who loves us and created all of this has plans for a hopeful ending, full of grace and goodness. I was really glad to see this excerpt from Revelation in the lectionary this morning. It's a reminder that the world will not end with the many ways we've sinned against God and one another. It's a conclusion full of beautiful renewal. But in the meantime, here we are. Here we are somewhere in the middle of that story. And it doesn't feel very beautiful, does it? 
In fact, it feels a whole lot more like those pop culture visions of rapture. But our gospel lesson also reminds us that we are not alone. In fact, Jesus offers a little foreshadowing of God's story ending, that together they will come and make their home with us. But in the meantime, Jesus tells us, peace, don't be afraid. Don't let your hearts be troubled. And Jesus lets us know that the Holy Spirit will be coming to help us with all of that. We have the help of the Holy Spirit and the assurance from Jesus that love will be the final chapter of God's story for us. Amidst the chaos of our world, there are signs of this peace and this help and this hope and this love. Holy Spirit brings us these reminders all the time. We have great examples of help and love in our world. And this is why we call our high school leaders at Massanetta the advocates. This very scripture, we call them the advocates because in the midst of all the heartache and difficulty, we have these young people ready and willing to show us the way to those people coming up behind them. The advocates remind us that it's okay to sing and dance and play games and find rest for a while. The advocates help us find grounding in our faith so we can face the hard things. The advocates remind us we are not alone in this. And this isn't just a story of high school advocates or of Massanetta Springs. This is the story of our community of faith that the Holy Spirit brings us together to remember the love and peace of our Lord. We are not alone. As this story continues to unfold, we are loved and we are not alone. Even the end of the story affirms this with many visions, but only one revelation, that Jesus is Lord. How can we be alone with love like that? So what do we do in the meantime? It's not the end yet. From the beginning of the story to its end, we know God has a plan for a beautiful creation where we are whole. The middle of the story is fraught with our sin and harms to one another and creation around us. We're sinners. But this is an opportunity for us to look for and lift up the Holy Spirit. And we're doing this, right? We are gathered here today to praise our God, to be glad and sing for joy that God's story is our story. No matter how many times we misstep, no matter how many times we put ourselves into conflict, that conflict resolves with Jesus coming back to restore us. In the meantime, we have the advocate, and we have the advocates. Holy Spirit shines through the people around us in this community of faith. We have help from one another, reminders of God's peace and love, people willing to do the hard work together, people willing to lead like elders being ordained and installed just this day. We can be those reminders for one another, living out the graciousness and blessings of our God. We can practice peace toward and with one another and all of creation around us. We can work toward restoration in our world. If this is God's end game, let us be part of it. Let's not wait. Let's honor that hope and promise by taking care of it now, not just the bright crystal river and the trees for the healing, but each other too. This is a beautiful opportunity to respond to hatred and violence with hope and with love. This is our story. No matter the difficulties around us, this is our story that we praise our God, our Savior, who promises peace and restoration. Let us live into that hope together. Amen. <laughs>